I'm Chris Kowronski from Berlin Practical Philosophy International Forum. I co-organize international conference on pragmatist Kant in Berlin in July 2017. And I would like to share with you with my idea about my project. I will be talking and writing about uh, pragmatist philosophy of values, Kantian philosophy of values, in the context of future developments. So first, I would like to explain why values. I would like to divide my presentation at this moment into two for the non-philosophical audience and philosophical audience. Because the problem of values is very um, important and very interesting and very, uh, um, I would say, frequently used in very many situations. So for non-philosophers, values is a term that is used very frequently in different, different areas. For example, in politics, in cultural life, when there is a discussion about, for example, American values, there are different uh, narratives about what is American or what are American values. The same in Europe, in the European uh, Union, uh, what are European values uh, in, in, in religion, we have uh, Christian values that are supposedly very different than secular values. So value and similar terms are frequently used, but I'm not sure if very many people study the meaning of this term. So I think it's interesting to learn more about that. It was my case. I was at some point very interested in the uh, in the meaning of this term and uh, how different contexts modify this meaning. So for the philosophical audience, I would like to say that many philosophical movements have developed their own idea of what is value. For example, pragmatism or, or pragmatist tradition or the philosophical tradition of American philosophy uh, has produced different types of understandings what, what, what values are. So this will be my main focus. I mean, I will focus predominantly on pragmatist understand, understanding on values. And I, I, I should say that uh, very many pragmatist philosophers use this term in different ways. I will study that. And then I will put it in the, in the context of contemporary challenges. What, what do I mean by contemporary challenges? Well, there are many challenges, of course, but uh, also in, in, uh, in the context of values. But for me, very interesting is to know how the philosophical discourses or philosophical reflection should change or should be modified in light of what we see on in social media or in the in the world of um, how to say aestheticization of the messages, aestheticization of news, what I'm saying is that um, when we are talking or, or debating or discussing about different problems, for example, ethical problems, more often than not, our audiences have some images in their heads that are taken from TV, from, from the internet, from smartphones, and these images uh, 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 are very important factors in understanding the issue. For example, when uh, there is a debate about refugees, there are some arguments against refugees or, or in favor of refugees. But I think that majority of the people who are thinking about the issue, they are not so much concerned about the uh, argumentation, but about the images they have from TV about, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, dead bodies of babies on, in the beaches of, of Italy, or the, um, I don't know, the, the, the riots on the streets of, for example, France or Italy. So these images are a very important part of the public debate. So if philosophers want to have more, uh, I would say, impact uh, in the public life, they should, I think, modify the narrative and make them more, I would say, 
using traditional words, aesthetic, uh, uh, aesthetic components. What or what we traditionally name the aesthetic or aesthetics. For example, uh, that the narrative should be inspirational, attractive, clear. And if we agree that such terms as attractiveness, clearness, and inspiration are aesthetic terms, so what I want to suggest is that the kind of link between the ethical message and aesthetic way of presenting this message is something that is one of the main challenges for philosophers, for those who want to have some impact or some influence upon the uh, public life. So um, the, the other part of my uh, story would be thinking about, about this, should pragmatist philosophers use or, 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 or study or take or be inspired by Kantian tradition of philosophy of values. And I will give some examples why these, um, to show that this answer is, is, is very important. So there are some points which I want to develop. The first one was or is that uh, Kantian tradition of philosophy of values can uh, uh, stimulate the pragmatist philosophy of value as far as I would say the definition or the status of pragmatist philosophy of value is concerned. I will give you an example. 100 years ago, there was uh, a, a quite famous uh, neo-Kantian uh, philosopher uh, in the US. Uh, Hugo Munsterberg, who wrote uh, a, a big book about uh, philosophy of values. The name, the title of this book was Eternal Values. And he knew very well the, the, the pragmatists at Harvard, because he was working at Harvard at the time. And he wrote this book and gave, in my opinion, very good, I would say, characteristics of what Kantian philosophy of value is about. And he wrote, quote, we have a world with over personal unconditional values, or we have no real world at all, but merely a worthless chance dream in which to strive for truth and morality can have no meaning whatsoever. End of quote. And I think that very often the, pragm uh, the pragmatist philosophers, including philosophers who I don't believe they refer to Munsterberg, like Richard Rorty, in the text, they refer to this type of um, definitions of this type of, of uh, um, characterization of, of, of um, uh, philosophical issues. For example, Rorty, 100 years later, wrote, uh, not, not, not referring directly to philosophy of values, but he wrote something as if suggests that he was as if studying <laughs> or had, uh, 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 he studied uh, Munsterberg. I, I, I don't think it was the case, but anyway, and he divided the, um, the uh, philosophical uh, problems amongst, uh, I mean, philosophers into big major group. The one uh, the, the first group described themselves as standing in immediate relation to a non-human reality versus those telling the story of their contribution to a community. It's, it, for me, it's a kind of uh, a, a, a reference, conscious or not, reference to what, uh, what is the main divide in... Um, in philosophy of values, Kantian and pragmatism, namely, do we have unconditional, unconditioned values? Do we have absolute values? Or simply we have, I, I would say, uh, values that are the products or, or, or the effects of uh, um, mm, uh, uh, social relationships. So this is, uh, study of this context is the first part of this, uh, interrelationship between the pragmatist philosophy of values and content philosophy of values in the context of future development. The, the next one is um, a possible link between values and norms. As we know, the Kantian philosophy was 
quite clear that values are linked with norms. And for some pragmatist philosophers, it is also the case. For example, Joseph Margulis is saying uh, that norms are exemplary values in the hierarchy of values. So it is, uh, for me, very interesting to study if the pragmatist philosophers who are interested in philosophy of values, sh should they uh, involve norms, normativity, in a while talking about values. So it will be next point for my consideration. The third one and the last one is, um, well, Kantian philosophy of values is, I would say, <laughs> we can say diminishes the social aspect of, of uh, the problem of values. I mean, there are no or very, very few uh, 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 analysis on social background of, of having values, whereas uh, the pragmatist tradition is just the opposite. Um, the predominant, uh, uh, I would say, that the, the mainstream of uh, pragmatist tradition talks about social relations and the, actually, one can say that uh, pragmatism is a social philosophy. So values, the problem of values evaluation is something that is secondary to the social relations. So philosophers who are involved in pragmatist way of looking at things should first of all be involved in explanation of social relations and then with the, uh, in the problem of values and valuation. So I would study these things uh, again I repeat, in the context of future developments and challenges that we, uh, we are facing now and in, in the coming years. Thank you for your attention. I'm Chris Kobrinsky from Berlin Practical Philosophy International Forum.